Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com. Welcome back to the video recap that we do here each and every night on the membership side of our website. So today we actually had a fairly quiet day, only three trades that we either opened or closed. As we get closer towards expiration here at the last week of expiration for March, we want to be actively getting rid of positions that are marginal, marginally profitable or marginally losing thinking about rolling options on those plays that are kind of you know right on the dance floor if you will so stocks that you're right around the strike price of your options whether you're a vertical call spread or a vertical debit spread a butterfly an iron condor whatever the case is this is the week that you want to start thinking about rolling that option but when you roll just go back to some of the checklists that we've have on the membership side of our site some of the blog posts that we've done you got to keep in mind when you're rolling that you always want to take in a credit if you're rolling a credit spread or an iron condor or a butterfly or something like that, you always want to take in a credit, be compensated for the extra time that you're taking in the roll. And you always want to look at the new trade uh, as an individual. So you want to look at that new rolling trade and say, okay, if I were to place this trade today for next month, would I place that same trade? Is implied volatility still high or still low? Does, it, does the stock still have the same features and the same underlying assumption as I did when I originally placed the trade? Or am I just trying to roll it here to try to prevent a paper loss, in which case you're just kind of wasting your time here. If it's a loss, it's a loss and close it out. And one example of that tonight is our SPY trade, which we'll go over here. It's just a loss and you just close out and you move on to the next trade. Before we do that, I want to talk about Priceline. So today we had an opening trade in Priceline. Priceline had really good implied volatility and we sold a nice wide put spread in Priceline for April expiration. So you'll notice that we sold the 1240-1235 credit put spread and we took in a nice credit of 135 on that. We sold two of those today. So nice big credit on that and we'll go to the chart of Priceline so you guys can see exactly excuse me, where we were in Priceline today as far as implied volatility and the movement of the stock. So you see up on the top left hand corner that implied volatility is at the 57th percentile. So that checks the box off for implied volatility being high or low. Implied volatility is actually fairly high, which is kind of a little bit odd for Priceline because earnings aren't really in the, the cycle right now for the next month and a half. So it seems like implied volatility is moving a little bit too high too fast. Now we decided to go with the put side of the market because of the recent sell off, right? We've had almost eight out of the last 10 days or so we've had the market continue to sell off for price line. So we're just playing the odds here. We think that at some point there's going to be a little bit more of a reversal. The general market was up today. We've had a little bit of a sell off. We might see a little bit more of a continual move higher here in the next month or so. So that's what we're playing. That's just our underlying assumption. We could have easily traded either side of the market here for price line. So I want to go to the actual trade grid and just show you guys exactly what I mean. You could trade any side of the market with price line because implied volatility is high so it really doesn't matter which side of the market you trade so long as you trade the same probability level. So if we scroll all the way down here on these April op options and there's a lot for price line, you'll notice that our levels or our strikes are over here and our first strike you'll notice is at the 34th percentile so it's about 35 percent chance that this stock will get down to 1240 between now and expiration. So it's about 65% chance of success, 34 or 35% chance of losing on this trade. Now that's actually a little bit higher than when we entered the trade. We entered it with about 30% chance of losing and about 70% chance of success. And you'll see that it's already starting to move against us just a little bit here on the day. Now if you wanted to mirror that image or mirror that trade yet on the opposite side of the market. So if you said, you know what, Kirk, I think that price line is going to continue to move lower and I want to take the opposite trade that you're taking, then all you would do is you would go to the call side of the trade grid here and you would find a probability level that's about the same as the one that we're trading right now. So in this case, the same probability level today would be the 1330, 1335 calls. <clears throat> Excuse me, and you'll notice that the probability of getting to that level on the top side is about the same as the probability of getting to 1240. So that's exactly what you want to do. It does not matter what side of the market you trade. You got to look at your overall portfolio. What do you need more of right now? Are you too bearish? Are you too bullish, etc.? Just by trading the right side of probability and matching your probabilities on each side, on the put side or on the call side, then you are making a sound decision either way. And really, at the end of the day, folks, 
I don't know what price line is going to do. I'm just making my underlying assumption. I just maybe potentially think it might go higher, but we don't have any clue where it could go. It could go up, it could go down, whatever the case is. So this is a really good example of how to use and trade both sides of the market. All right, so let's talk about closing trades. The first one I want to go over here tonight is Home Depot. This is a great story with Home Depot. And what I mean by story is that even though it was an $11 profit per spread, so we only made about $33 on this trade overall, and really just closed out this trade as we're getting close to expiration. This is a trade that pretty much went against us for the better part of February and the better part of March until very, very recently. Now, anybody else trading this right now, and there's a lot of guys out there, I see it all the time, where they say, you know what, you got to set a stop loss, you know, you got to cap your risk at this, you got to do this, 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 whatever the case is. But this is a great example of the stock turning all the way back around after earnings and becoming a profit the week of expiration. Even though it's a small profit, it turned from almost a full loser as it had earnings and popped up huge to a nice small profit and just totally wiped it out. Now, of course, there's always trades that go the opposite way and, and they jump after earnings, they never come back around. But this is, again, what I continue to point to, that you just have to be diligent in letting this position work itself out all the way to expiration. That's why you have all that time. So here's a chart of Home Depot and we traded this back in the end of January. So right around here in the end of January, which was around 78, 79 when the stock was there. And it was a nice stock and it was making a little bit of money, but we were just holding out and waiting for it to go through earnings because implied volatility was still high, so the price wasn't changing too much. And then you'll notice here, uh, right after the 24th, it had earnings and Home Depot jumped dramatically and then kept going higher. Now at this point, our strikes are way, way, way deep in the money. And really it's becoming a full loser until about the last two weeks here and it turned all the way around and reverse course <clears throat> and came all the way back full circle and came back down to around 78, 79 and gave us a great opportunity to exit this thing before expiration. Now we could continue to hold it obviously, but we're so close here. Our strikes are so close right at 80 is our first strike. So there's no point now with only four days left to expiration to kind of roll the dice on this one and either make a big profit or make a nice profit or lose a big chunk of money. So at this point, it used to be a huge loser, has turned all the way around, and now is becoming a very small winner, but at least we don't take that huge loss. <clears throat> the last trade here tonight is SPY. So now this is a great example of a trade that just worked totally against us the whole time. Never came back around, kind of defies gravity here, and we just generally know this from what's happened here in the market over the last couple weeks. Now this was originally, I believe, a iron condor that we had on SPY. We closed out one side. Now we're closing out the other side here on for the March call side. And you can see these are just really deep in the money. We basically closed it out for almost max loss. Max loss is about $2, so we saved $0.10 cents on each vertical that we closed out. Closed out about five of those verticals. So it was a pretty heavy loss, but that's okay. That's what we're trying to do here is make a lot of trades, and sometimes we're going to have winners, sometimes we're going to have losers. This is also a great example of a trade you do not want to roll to next month. We had the 180, 182 call spread. We go to SPY and you'll notice that those options are so far deep in the money now that's not even worth it. So we are at the 180, 182 price point here and you'll see that we're so far deep in the money at this point, it's so far out of the money that there's no point to roll to next month. You're basically just rolling and rolling and rolling and at the price you would pay, you could only make about 10 cents. So if you rolled to next month, the most you can make next month is maybe 10 cents because of the pricing of the roll. So it just doesn't make sense to do this. But yet, I still see people do this all the time. They'll roll this and kind of assume that that loss will take care of itself. They roll it enough times. But if you don't roll it for a credit and you're always paying to roll it and you just keep reducing the amount of money you're going to make, there's no point. You're just wasting capital. You're better off to just adjust your strikes up or whatever the case is and enter a new position somewhere above the market if you think that that's exactly what you need to do. But at this point right now, implied volatility is back down below the 50th percentile. There's no point to adjust this trade and, and roll it for another credit. It just doesn't fit the criteria anymore. So what we have to do is close out this trade and move on to the next trade. So again, hopefully you guys enjoy these videos. I love doing these videos. If you guys have any questions or comments, about the trades we made here or any of the other trades as we get closer to expiration week, please add them in the comment section right below this video. I'll get back to all of those comments either tonight or tomorrow before the open and happy trading.